Everybody, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Bulletproof Dental Practice Podcast. What is this? What is this special voice you've got right now? You don't, don't it's, just it's feeling that. good. It's feeling, you know, I got, I got good energy this morning. You know, why, I know why? you always is say because Bitcoin's and, flying. No, that well, here? that could, if, you, if we want to go and talk there, we can, but no. Yeah. You know, honestly, like you and Chris, and there's some other people in my life that say that sometimes I have bad energy and, and I, I need to be self-aware like I teach and, and be aware of that energy and, and my tonality, you know, and my nonverbal communication and just bring it. I bring it a little bit better. You know, I've got so, there's so many blessings to be had before. And then, so you, you said it the other day to me, you said something about you were making a joke. And I was like, you know, like there's a lot of truth in jokes. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to try to not be, not be so serious all the time and grumpy. Sometimes. What was the joke? I don't remember. I don't know. You said something like, you know, Pete would be grumpy. Like it would be, I don't know. I, we were coming up with names and you would, your name was giving me a name or something. It would be like grumpy source or something. No, I told you like, my name for you is Spart Spart like the, uh, Maximus. Oh, well, no, but this was something the other day. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, so the, you, you asked about my voice. If, if you would like to talk about Bitcoin, Craig, you know, I am always gain because I feel like I am the uh, I've been the Lone Ranger in this space since 2016. Yeah. And Instead you've suffered, by the way, because I teased I... you relentlessly. Um, <laughs> Dude, you and, and, and a Peter, we're not, we're, by the way, don't don't turn this podcast off. We are not talking about Bitcoin today. It's not about that. But but I just want to say something that Peter said to me, Craig, please, I'm begging you. Just take blank dollars. You can afford blank dollars, and blank dollars, by the way, is a lot of money. It was, it was a lot of. There was a couple of zeros in there. Was, Craig, was that was that a humble flex that you have a lot of like blank dollars? No, 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 no. I just don't want to say. You know, I don't want to say the amount because the, the amount's irrelevant. Because if you right. would have put five thousand dollars in when you said it, or two thousand mm -hmm. dollars, so but Pete was actually giving me a specific amount, and he says, "Please, please do it," and I said, "Nah." You're freaking crazy. You're a gamer. I just teased you relentlessly. You're a nerd. You, you're, you're a nerd. nerd Dental wormhole. Influencers Alliance. You're wearing a Bitcoin shirt. I'm ragging on you. We got Peter Maluk on the podcast. I'm like, Peter, wait, Peter Maluk, wait till you hear what Bolden's going to say. He's going to, he can't wait to ask about Bitcoin. And Peter Maluk just literally put Everybody the smack down on me. you. It was great. Everybody laughs. Everybody. Yeah, what's that quote? At first they laugh and then they, and then they say it was their idea. So yeah, they first so. they laugh and they get quiet and then they join or something like that. Yeah, I need to. We need to look that up for me. I will. Yes, yeah, so you know we need, we need that person. We need like Jamie. The, Jamie. We need, uh, Jamie. That's what I was just yeah. about to say, Greg. We need yeah, I Jamie. Said it five like times Joe, before your brain caught up to me. Can we <laughs> shut up, Jer? Can we? Uh, can we put that on Spodak payroll, please? <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> why not? Everybody else is perfect. Oh, that's um, awesome. So yeah, we won't go there, but you know it has been a good run, and and the one thing I will say is that is something happened happened yesterday that I am massively bullish in the space is because because PayPal just entered the scene and that's you know it went from having a hundred thousand wallets like you said or eight hundred thousand wallets that have over you know a certain number of Bitcoin to three hundred fifty million so distribution now, yeah, of everything so the, yeah it's and the network 800, effect thou, it, yeah eight hundred thousand wallets right now for Bitcoin meaning how many accounts can you buy Bitcoin and PayPal has three hundred and forty six million users and if you go on your PayPal right now if you haven't checked in since Thursday since yesterday mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's a very interesting bottom button on the bottom buy crypto so um, the the quote is uh, Mahatma Gandhi it's first they ignore you yeah. then they laugh at you yeah then they fight you. Yeah. Then you win. Mm. So well, I have a very good friend. I have a very, yeah, it will be. History will prove you right, I believe. Well, that was my quote. I know. I know. We have so much information that. So Pete last night pings me at 9.43 p.m. with a screenshot of him buying more Bitcoin. And he goes, your turn. I'm like, bro, are we really <laughs> doing this? Like, you're teasing? Are you hazing me right now? I'm, ta I'm financially taunting you, dude. You're, ta you're, 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 you're taunting me. <laughs> And, yeah. and I, did, I did do it. But, um, of course you did. All time, you did. It's like right against one of the all-time highs. 9.43, he buys it. It's your it's turn. Thesis. It doesn't matter when you buy it. It's a thesis. Well, okay. So let's not get in there, even though we said we went. So what I want to talk about today is a, is a fascinating email that I got and that you and I, res that we both responded to. So we get emails from time to time um, from people either just saying thank you or you changed my life or you know and we've spoken about this in the podcast sometimes we get questions and thought-provoking things um some and 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 we can't help everyone unfortunately in the emails we get but sometimes there are very succinct ways to address the question right you know it actually goes back to the uh 
um, the podcast we did, Craig, talking about let me pick your brain. Yep. Um, so if I got someone one of those last week, by the way, right? Let me pick your brain, which is like, please don't do that, people. Not 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 don't do it to us, but just don't do it to anyone in your life. Like, come with succinct. I've done this research. I've I've made these steps. Blah blah blah. And here's my specific question. And that's what this person did. Who who emailed? And his name is Scott. He's a first year dental student. Um, and I just thought it was interesting. I, I, number one, I kind of like I got I was taken aback because I guess there are a lot of dental uh, students that listen to us, but not so much as like other practice, other podcasts. Like um, Craig, there's one that's pretty popular called Shared Practice, which is fascinating. I've, I've been listening to that one um, because it's it's three guys, and I, I don't think either they're in dental school or they've only been out for a few years, but it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, they're, they're crowdsourcing, actually, from what I understand. They're kind of learning as they go, and they're yeah, but it's pretty awesome. It's actually really cool. Um, um, I've, I've actually enjoyed listening to it just from a whole different side of the planet, if you will. Right. Like yeah, meaning I'm on new perspective. The, I'm on, yeah, I'm on the other side of my career and they're on the beginning side of the career. Um, but it's, it's fascinating. Anyway, my so, point so is, I, is I wanna, that we I have a lot summarize. of dental student, students. And, and so he, Scott emailed us and, and asked Craig and I a specific question. Um, and Craig, do you want me to read it so I can give some context? Um, I could summarize it because I got it right up here. Basically, okay. it's thanks a lot. I'm a first year student and newcomer to the world of dentistry. I'm so grateful for you guys. Good stuff. Thank you for contributing. I want, also want to ask your advice on something. Recently listened to the podcast episode about where you guys talked about hiring and DSO applicants. And we both talked about thoroughbreds, quote unquote. Dr. Bolden referred to these applicants as thoroughbreds. My question is, how do these applicants stand out from others and how can I make and market myself as the next level applicant? In the same vein, is there anything that I should be doing while in dental school that would help me be the kind of dentist that you would guys would be excited to hire? So what, what the best part about this email is your reply, Peter. I was really proud of this. This is awesome. So basically Thanks. you hit it square. You said, essentially, we appreciate the kind words, but... Um, that you remember reaching out to the the big guys in the field uh, when you were just starting no, I, out. No, I say I, I responded because yeah. literally I remember doing the same thing when I was a first year dental student before, like the only thing that was popular back in then was dental town. And I reached to, out to a guy who became a mentor of mine later um, in my first year. And I was like, you're never going to respond to this. And he, he didn't have a pod, obviously podcasting or anything wasn't, wasn't around back then, but I, wish I found his email, got his email because I just really admired him. And his name was Tom Trinkner. He's in South Carolina. I remember emailing him. Oh, something yeah, I remember very, her Thomas. Hit, I remember him. Sorry. Him. I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> weird. Sorry. weird. Uh, yeah. He's a stud like, like, yeah, he's a stud. Anyway, but he spent the time and sent me like, here's the five things you need to do in your life. And it was, it wasn't just so dental. It was like, you know, make sure, you know, do massages and take care of your body and things. It was a lot of stuff. So it was, it was wisdom, even in dental school. So I felt very, um, so my response to him was, I remember reaching out to a few giants in the industry and I'm, that I'm still friends with at, to this day. Um, and when I was a first year and I was like, and the fact that you're a first year dental student, and Craig, you will agree with this. The fact that you're a first year dental student listening, not only do you have 40 hours of class a week, right? Right. But you're listening to podcasts. So that puts you at a massive, massively ahead of your, of your classmates. Um, and it, it's just, it was just crazy. So I said, I said, look, I'm going to answer your question, but I want, I want to, I want this not to be lost on you that you are, you're going to be a success merely from the fact that you are taking extracurricular activity in dental school to learn how to be a better applicant at the first year dental student. You got three other years to worry about that, right? So anyway, Craig, I wanted to give a little more context because you were gonna you were gonna blow over that. So no, no, it's huge. It's huge. Keep going, but it, keep it's going. true. So um so actually your email is great and inspired. You know, so when we get these emails and we realize that these are great questions, we're like rather than just answer the question, let's actually podcast about it. And we, we love this stuff because sometimes it's like what Peter Peter and I are trying to figure out what is going to move the needle on the who gives a crap meter or what so, people want. Yeah. 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 What yeah, you sorry. guys want. I mean, as much as we love hearing yourself talk, we, give us, I mean, whatever it is, there's such a, a, a good amount of topics that we could discuss. So this is perfect. So essentially uh, Pete, you say that. And then it was, it, it came down to uh, four essential things. Um, so we're going to, let's go through and talk about each one. That I wrote down. In, yeah. He, you response, wrote back, yeah. you wrote down. And uh, so, um, so I think, uh, and then Pete wrote, I think this would be a great podcast topic. So we answered him, we answered this guy and we're going to talk about it right now. 
So the first thing that you wrote is clinical skills, not just prepping a crown, but next level diagnosis and treatment plan. So that's the first and foremost thing that you have to have. And I think one of the things that happens is most people never get off this step. So, you know, at a certain point, you can learn your clinical and diagnostic skills and you're still getting no said to you. So what do you do? You learn more clinical skills and you're still, things are not working out. Your team's falling apart. You can't get your marketing in order. Things are not going as well. And what do you do? You just keep going back to the same well to get more clinical skills. And that's not what you need. But I think it's really important to talk about. It's incumbent upon you as a medical provider. You have the ability to hurt people or help people. You get, we come out of dental school, unfortunately, really ill-equipped, really ill-equipped. Right. Occlusion, when we learn occlusion in dental school, it's something that we, I don't even understand. I didn't understand non-working movements and the concepts were so abstract to me. I couldn't understand the function of the mouth. And I just thought it was like an alligator, like click, click, click. I didn't realize it moves all around. So I think that you almost need to, the first two years, I would say, you need to up your diet on heavy clinical. And by the way, I want to talk just one more thing. I know I'm using a lot of oxygen here, but I want to say this one thing. Dentists, when they come out, they'll always ask me, what should I do? And they'll actually pick, they'll, they'll pick very narrow, focused procedural training because what they do is they know what they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Right. So in other words, they say, I know how to do an MOD. I know how to do a crown. I don't know how to place an implant. I don't know how to do um, gingival surgery. And I don't know how to take out impacted wisdom teeth. So they'll go get that training. But what you don't know that you don't know is you really, really don't know occlusion. And everything rises and falls on occlusion, in my opinion. Your surgery, your implant, your crown, your veneers. Yeah. If you don't understand occlusion, you, don't, you won't get ahead. So I, well, I look at like, think... like a pyramid. Let me just, I'll comment yeah. and I'll let you keep going on, on yeah, this go. is, is really, I think what changed for me was, you know, and this is going to sound like, duh, but it's, it's not dentistry is not the tooth. It's the mouth. And is and, right. and as soon as you can start zooming way out and saying, yes. okay, I'm not going to yeah. just give Mrs. Jones the crown. I'm going to have deeper conversations. And right. that becomes sweaty back sometimes when you see malocclusion, how do I explain but that's where the that's where the magic is. How do how do you explain something? What does Einstein say? Taking some the the, the true the true sign of you being able to uh, conceptually know something is being able to take something super complex and explain it really well or really right. easily. So, so, so my point is so zo zooming out and then being able to look at it from a mouth perspective. You know, okay. from a from an oral cancer, from a from occlusion, from a right. you know all these things, right? So there's zooming another out. dimension to that too, Peter. So check this out too. So, but how does two, someone do that, Greg? How does someone do that okay, other than just getting a lot of reps? Okay, I want to tell you about how. So in dental school and for the non-advanced trained dentist, we feel very comfortable with an imminent problem and discussing the solution. Mrs. Jones, you bit down on something. You obviously broke your tooth. You obviously mm -hmm. need a crown. Mm -hmm. You have decay. It's, look at it on the x-ray. I don't know. I know you think we're looking at a bunch of toes here, but you see the big black circle there? There's a big old decay. Or that pain you have, that, that's the reason. So we feel comfortable because we have a readily understood problem and a readily understood solution to provide them. Occlusion is a long-term problem. So we feel good when we have a very short timeline to say problem solution. But occlusion is something that really won't change for another five or 10 years. It's like an Invisalign conversation. I tell people, don't talk about Invisalign like they need to have it done immediately. It took you 15 years to have this crowded bite or 20 years. It took you 15, 20 years to wear these teeth down at this point. So occlusion is just a time perspective. So you have to tell a patient like, hey, everything looks okay right now. Got no decay. You got no periodontal disease. You're doing great. Have you ever seen in these pictures, see how these teeth are really short? And, and how old are you again? Oh, you're 32. Yeah. You see how they're really short. You know, I know they're still level because the body has a way of lifting it up. You see how they're short. That's because your bite is wearing them down. So by the time you're my age and you're 50, you're going to have much, much shorter teeth. Do you, does biologic mom or dad have a lot of dental work, a really short teeth? And ch chances are biologically, there'll be some similarity. I'll say, Oh my God, my dad has really short teeth. He has tons of, he lost his teeth. Well, here I, I just want to make sure we keep your teeth for a lifetime. You're only 30. You got to keep your teeth for another 50 years. So let's talk about that. I'm not talking about anything immediate. This is an educational conversation. So it's looking from the tooth to the mouth and that 
in that plane of getting broad and 30,000, the vertical plane, but also looking at the, the uh, latitude as well, the length of time. So saying, um, this is going to be a problem in the future for you. This is a 10, 15, 20 year problem. I think that's something that people mess up. Yeah, Does that make sense, Pete? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And I think that's a good, I think that's a good cap on, you know, just the, one of the four things that you're going to talk about, but it's, um, and some of it is just giving yourself grace that it, you're not going to get a right out of dental school and, and have the, the, the skills, or the know-how it's a continual quest to learn how to communicate, learn how to get bigger presentations, um, bigger, scarier presentations, right. Have, have longer conversations and Craig, you've become a master at it because, you you are good with you are good on stage, meaning you're good in public. You're you're a good public speaker, so you're very comfortable in your own skin and your dialogue. A lot of dentists, myself included, really have to sit there and practice. I used to I can remember literally practicing in front of the mirror some treatment plans that I would do. Um, yeah, because it's that, just say- so. My, so I think it really number one goes without saying. It's obviously clinical clinical skills, and it's not how fast you prepped that crown, right? Right. It's, so it's, I want to I want to just say something that might blend into another topic as well. But uh, one of the other points, one of the other three points you made, but uh, you talk about like getting good with words and saying things. I tell my doctors, uh, my doctor said, you know, I had a doctor recently say to me, um, I presented that I really didn't think she'd say yes to it. So I just did a mock up on four teeth, and she said yes. I'm like, well, there's a lot of wear, and and we really dove deep, and she's like, I just guess I have a feeling of rejection. And the reason why I'm good at talking to patients is because of my heart, I believe I'm doing exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of CE around there. They use like quasi, you know, I don't know, like Scientology practices and stuff like that, the power of enrollment. I just believe that before you go into the room, if you can realize you have a gift to help somebody and it is not about you. We talked about being liked and how much I like to be liked. I don't give a flying fuck if you don't like me as a doctor as long as you know i'm coming from a good place and i would I add one more thing you do to yeah. that and something i actually had i did as well which was what my team would tell me is that you go in with your recommendations with absolute certainty this is what you need right you but certainty you, took time because i had to believe i could time. do it yeah so the first couple true. times i went with pseudo certainty like hey you should do this it's going to be great and then i'd walk in i'm like oh i hope i can pull it off but then you got the reps of actually doing it so it's not that you got the reps of saying what you need you got the reps of believing what you could do for people number two number two number kind two. of blends kind of blends right into it by the way okay it's the people skills so pete's next thing he says you got to have people skills you have to have high eq those thoroughbreds, they know how to read nonverbal communication. They know how to make patients feel comfortable, both team and patients. They are self-aware. Take it away, Pete. Yeah, so I think this is actually probably the most underappreciated aspect of someone, and it can be learned. It, you can learn how to become this, right? Like I, I used to come up, Greg, I, I, I claim that I'm an introvert um, at heart, and I think I am. I think my happy place is kind of recharging my batteries alone. So I felt like I was going on stage every day for eight hours. And so I learned how to get out of that phase and I would come home exhausted because it drained, it drained me. But my it's point so is, so interesting to me is that I made a, I'd, I'd come, I would be like, what's wrong. I mean, every, she just knew that she had to leave me alone for an hour when I got home because I just get wiped because I was on stage. And that's what introverts have to do in an extroverted world, just so you know, but, but I made it a practice. And I, I literally read books and, and, and took courses on, on, on nonverbal communication, because I really, my, the whole thesis of my practice was the patient experience. I wanted to, I wanted to change dentistry, but, you know, and have people have a different experience and people will tell you the way that they're looking or responding or moving or, or their hands are doing, or they're, they'll tell you their comfort level. They'll tell you their experience without having to tell it. And so it was very important to me to learn to learn how to learn how to make someone super comfortable in a place they probably didn't want to be. No one loves going to the dentist and I wanted to change that. And so that was something that I had to learn. Craig was, was emotionally intel, emotional intelligence, how to learn body language, nonverbal communication, how to make people comfortable, not only just as I lead my team, but also uh, not only my patients rather, but also the team. And that's a life skill that can help you. And that has helped me tremendously in life, but I wasn't born with it. I wasn't, you, you, I would think that you're, you were more innate and you got kind of gifted with that, the gift of gab and making people feel, and you're, you're more an empath. And I just wasn't like that. So I had to physically learn it. Um, But it served me very well because people, 
in dentistry, they don't judge us on, you know, you, I heard you have the best margins on your crown stock. No, it's my friend had a great experience. You treated her really well. It didn't hurt. And she had a great experience. That's it. Right. Yeah. I, I, I know this is not the topic for this podcast, so I'm going to, but I do believe, um, you know, you'll, you'll say you're an introvert, but I, I just think that um, there's a, uh, and this is my last ho- This is my last woo woo touchy feely bullshit. I'm going to do for the day. This is my only thing. They say that the journey from the head to the heart, the 18 inches from your head to the heart is the longest journey that the human being will ever go on because to connect, connect your brain to your heart is something really hard. And we're not, we, we learn it when we're kids and we forget about it. Mm-hmm. So like you say, you're an introvert, but yet you're on a podcast spewing your guts out to help people because you're, you know, in your heart, like, I want to help. I want to pay it forward. I want to do all that stuff. So I think what it was, was that you just had that disconnect of being, you know, in the shadow of some big giants and you're like, eh, am I really qualified? And then once you got qualified, you happen to do a lot of reading and research, but once you got qualified and you actually believed in what you can do, then you're not an introvert. We're only an inch. We, you know, I Maybe. think it's whatever. It's not for, it's for later. Yeah. I, but, but I still I, think my knee jerk reaction is, I mean, I still get social anxiety. I still have, like, you know, so I, I think I, I agree with what you're saying. I think you can force your way out of, you know, you, you can work out and, you know, if, if you're skinny and you want to get big, you go to the gym and it's the same kind of philosophy. You, you right. work on skills that you want to increase. Exactly. Right? Regardless of how you're built, if I would, you know, but, okay. uh, but to, to, to sum up those two things right now, we got clinical skills and people skills. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is that you can have wonderful people skills and terrible clinical skills and be wildly financially successful. I don't think you'll be really successful because you're screwing people up, but you can make a lot of money. And then the also unfortunate paradox is you could have amazing clinical skills, the best margins ever, and be so socially awkward and distant, you will go out of business. I've seen people do that. Yeah, so you treat are, people like a deniform, you know, kind right. of thing. And like and you, you go, talk out, you go to, to them business. like a deniform. Yeah. Like, let me see, Miss Jones, you've got a new gross debridement on you. Like, yeah, how long, why, what's taking you so long to get it, to me? Did he say I'm gross? I think he just said right, I'm that's gross. People right. Hear. Yeah. Oh, so God, anyway, that that's should the... be a whole nother podcast is the things in sh- the de- things in dentistry that you should not effing say yeah. ever. Yeah. All right. Keep going, on. bud. Okay. Number three, show up as owners, even before, you know, so even before they are owners, learn a skill that would add value to any practice. Being able to scan fast with Itero, for example, 3D printing experience with mesh mixer, digital photography, being handy with IT and otherwise. I remember my first practice, I took on so many things that they couldn't let me leave. That was Peter saying that. So just yeah, being so valuable, my, talk about that. Yeah, so I was hired in a practice and I knew I'm right out of school, right? And I wedged my way in the door and I've told you this experience, right? I've offered to work for free. They end up paying me like an assistant. I just wanted, wanted to work there. But once I got in the door, I knew, and I knew that that's why I offered to work for free. I knew that, that, that I would be able to get in there and offer such value, even as the young associate baby doc, they called me, right? Um, Doogie Hauser, I think that was my name, that I would be able to add value where they didn't have it in this massive practice. Me, the 25 year old dentist would be able to, I knew photography. I was an IT, I was a uh, computer science uh, TA and undergraduate, and I knew I could offer a lot of tech assistance when something was broken. Um, And there were just a lot, there were, there were a lot of things that I knew. I knew dental materials really well. So I was able to kind of help with stuff there. Um, And, um, and so I I would just lean wherever I could add value and stay late and do things and where do I could it make for free I mean, and do, make myself indispensable because I knew there'd be a time when I was going to have an ask Greg, yeah. where I was going to say, Hey, I don't really want to be paid like a dental assistant anymore. I'm a dentist and I have massive bills and massive debt. So I knew there was going to be a time when I was going to have a big ask. Yeah. Right. And so I knew, but that, that it, but I had a short window of saying a year or six months or whatever, just show up as if right? show up. I was, I was a, I was a indispensable as I was an owner. I wanted to lean in as much as possible. And it wasn't, well, that's not my, I never once said that's not my job. Yeah. It, you know what I said? Or, or flex. Hey, we, fl- this needs to happen. You know what I said? Give it to me. Yeah. Give it to me. Let me do it. Let me handle it. Or, got, or I, flex the whole thing. If I do this, can I get this? Or, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's such a different thing when you're, when you haven't added any value yet and you're coming on and you know, it's an opportunity to get ahead and you're already more concerned about yourself than the organization mm-hmm. and the greater, that's a red flag for anyone. Or like I could have played the, well, my call, co- you know, my classmates are making, you know, yeah. three times more than me. Like that's not, you know, that would have prevented yeah. me 
my, 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 my career would have taken a completely different trajectory if I had been trying to serve me in the beginning. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. One of my doctors came in fully. Um, he had, he had actually, you know, gotten his degree USC uh, school of dentistry, and he just didn't have his Florida license. And he was working as an assistant with an assistant salary. And the first day he finally got his license and after, you know, making an assistant salary for a year or two. And the first day he came in as a doctor, it was, he was a Saturday crew. He bought the entire team, like breakfast sandwiches from Dunkin' Donuts, like consistently always showing up, showing up as an like, owner, as an owner. Right. And, you know, we have, and you did the same thing. So it's, um, you know, we're, we're bringing on a doctor right now. Who's an avid fan of the podcast. And his story is that he was working at IHOP, um, in Boca mm-hmm. and he waited on a dentist and the dentist, he's like, what do you do? He's like, I'm a dentist. And he's like, can I, after waiting on him for several weeks in a row, he's like, can I come to your office and I will work for free? Can you just show me what it's like to be a dentist? And made himself indispensable in the same Mm -hmm. IT way because he's young. And the guy he was working with was, you know, a little older, probably our age at the time. And just didn't have the command of IT that this kid had. And he became Mm -hmm. indispensable and then went Mm -hmm. to dental school. And when I interviewed this guy, he was speaking in our language. I'm like, Oh, that's so funny. I say that. And Pete says that he's like, yes, I listened to every <laughs> single one of your podcasts. Did more he say than binary once. by chance? Chris? He did. He said binary, he's buying Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. He was camel all the time. He's a uh, gold camel. rhino. It's crazy. He, then he's cool. Then he's cool. He wears yeah. camel all the time. So that's, that's, uh, that's three show up, show up like an owner. And, um, and the opposite is really frustrating. Pete, we've had uh, situations in our past where people just don't show up like that. And it's all about them. And it's just so annoying. Relationships work better best friendships included when everybody's giving 110 percent your your spouse your your best friends everybody should always be fighting for the check that's mm-hmm. a cool relationship i have friends that i'm like damn it i have to freaking call the restaurant before i show up at this motherfucker because he's going to pay for it when i get there like you know i'm always trying to outdo and that's, that's awesome that's a, i mean that's a relationship that we all have um at least in our in our circles so the fourth that peter wrote fourth tipped to being a quote thoroughbred is Humble and hungry, open to coaching and being coached, dot, 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 forever. So open to coaching and being coached forever. Constant student. Talk, Peter, if you don't mind. Yeah. So this is just, you know, it's funny. I was having the conversation of um, this the other day with a doc and, and I was saying that literally the answers are out there. So it, and you can't, the minute you think you've got something figured out in either that's dentistry or something complex like dentistry, it's a dangerous proposition. So keeping a, keeping a mind, an open mind to saying, I don't really know how to do that, but I'm going to learn how to do it because the answers are out there. They're on the internet, they're with mentors, whatever it is. So, you know, I, I just feel sorry for the people that think like, I've got this, there's nothing else left to learn because what a, what a miserable place that would be. So I think being humble and knowing that, that you don't have it, you don't know what you don't know. And trust me, it's a lot. You know, I say that to myself all the time. I don't know anything about anything, um, but I can That's sure as hell learn. Hmm? Yeah, Such but I can sure as hell learn. And it makes life way more interesting. Like yeah. right now, Craig, believe it or not, like this is a, a stupid tangent, but my, my, my son wants to learn how to play guitar. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn too. Like, why not? Like, I know this is a stupid ass tangent, but like, but it's not like oh, I'm too old for guitar or, you know, um, I shouldn't learn that. or I don't have the time for that. Um, yeah. It's a fundamental it, fixed versus growth mindset. Fixed versus there it is. There, so there, there you nailed fixed, it. Fixed mindset is the quote, failure is the limit of my abilities. And for a growth mindset, failure is an opportunity to grow. So and, fixed and mindset being, is I'm either good at it or I'm not. And a growth mindset says I can learn to do anything I want if I spend enough time. And, 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 and one thing I will say is I learned a lot when I'm going back to the, the, epi, the number three example that I have in that practice, a lot of my mentors at the time, and a lot of people who, who helped me and, and made me learn were not dentists, meaning yeah. they were treatment coordinators and they were assistants that had a lot of skill. Oh yeah, so me too. Me too, it's so time. many, I think so many times we, as dentists, we look for, for, for learning only for, because I'm only going to learn from a dentist because they'll understand me, but so much like I can think of a, a person in my practice, her name is Debbie and she's a treatment coordinator and she was at my old practice. And now she's been with me at my practice. And I learned so much from her because she is a master treatment coordinator. She has a way with words that I learned from going back to number two, the people skills I learned from her still 
you know, she's an empath like you, Craig, and she just has a way of enrolling treatment. And I'm mesmerized by it because I've seen her work for 20 years, but she has been a mentor, even though she didn't go to dental school. Right. Um, so I think just being yeah, open, really important. being really open important. to your like team you, you, to being coached. Yeah. You right? don't need not like, where did you go to dental school, which is our yeah. pet peeve, Craig. Right. Yeah, you don't need credentials to learn from people. You don't need to have a credentialed person. A fool can a fool can teach you something. A fool can teach you what not to do. You might have like a uh, you know you might have a traumatic relationship with a parent, and you know what? That's the, and you might say, well, geez, I wish I had the dad like you know Pete's dad. Pete's dad's awesome. He's always there. But you know, you can learn a lot just knowing what not to do. So the reason I have- added humble and hungry, Craig, is because you said that the other night on our mastermind call. Um, and, and everyone was kind of like, we were all kind of like clapping, like, yeah, that's a great term. And so I, I included it there. Do you want to, do you want to talk about that in terms of that context or? Yeah. That- yeah. So it's uh, the, the humble and hungry is like, we're always in this crossroads of like wanting more and being grateful. Like, you know, it's like, you know, you want to make money, but you also want to be grateful and you want to work hard, but you also want peace. And it's a Tony Robbins context of, you know, achieving to be happy versus happily achieving. So you can achieve to get to somewhere, but you and I know every time we celebrate something, it's like, yeah, that was cool. And then a couple of weeks later, it's like, what's next? What's next? And you can always just live your life in the what's next. And there's something about being hungry for more and knowing that your greatest days are ahead as far as, you know, obviously your body's going to break down as you get older, but you get so much smarter. Things don't bother you as much. And to be hungry for, for growth, progress equals happiness. So whether you're crawling or, you know, falling forward, at least you're going forward life begins to really suck when you just feel like everything's going backwards, you know? So I, I think there's a, a, something that needs to happen to people as they get older. You're, you know, you have to keep growing. My dad is here right now, 78 years old. He was locked in his house because of COVID for six months. He's like, you know what? Screw it. I'm coming back. And he's doing exams. He's here. His energy's up. You know, you have to, you have to, you have to live your life and keep growing. Um, mm-hmm. Is that, is that kind of what we were talking that was about? It. Yeah. I mean, but that was it, but it's not, that isn't just a saying. It really is like, you really have to adopt that and say, I don't really know how to, don't say like, I don't know how to do that. In my house, I yell at my kids. They're like, well, I don't know how. Well, well guess what? I didn't know how to do a lot of shit once upon a time, but I learned. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and there's always that way. There's always a way to do it. So don't use that excuse. Well, I don't know how to do that. Right. Because that's an act of surrender. And in this day and age where, where technology and education is almost just floating around, ready for you to pluck it wherever you want, just don't do you wanna, use that. Do you want to know the snarkiest thing? The most co- snarky. The, snark, the, snark. The, well, I don't know snarky. It's just, you want to know the, like the little crappy thing I always do to people now. And it's just, but, I just can't help myself. People will text me a question, team, friends, anybody, doctor wanted in, you know, work with us, some, something like that. They'll ask me something. I'll do a screen record. You know, they'll say like, how do you do X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. I'll screen record. I'll open up my phone. I'll go Mm -hmm. to Google and I'll put their question in and then I'll circle it and send it back to them. <laughs> Dude, if that's you are such a passive aggressive. It's dick, so passive aggressive, but if but you they ever, don't make that mistake again, do they? If you ever, ever ask someone that can be answered with Google. You got to really, really look at what you're asking. Yeah, you're wasting how, their how, time. You're and wasting also, time. no, your it's belief system, your belief system too. It's not about you. It's about you. Like, why would you, why are you feeling that helpless that you that can't? That goes back your- to the, the ass thing we talk about, Craig, right? Like if you've exhausted Google, if you've exhausted other examples, then yeah, right. but let's but then, yeah. then ask your question. But like, don't use me or someone else in your life or you as, Craig, your, or, as your easy button as your easy but i don't feel like Google. it's just not fair to them it's right. not it's not that i i don't mind doing the google for them but it just shows how powerless somebody mm. could be that they would rather type the question to you than type it to google and you'll get better information on google <laughs> all know? right let's let's stop the uh let's stop the thoroughbred talk for a second and i want to bring up a quote then and this is a totally tangent and then i want to talk about just some things that are going on in our life like updates on summits or courses or whatever. And we'll talk about, but I heard a quote on the podcast the other day that I was mesmerized by. And so I am a big fan of Peter Diamand is who you are as well. And I think he is making a book. Um, I actually went out, I do, I do a lot of my physicals out on the West coast because of, I'm such a fan of Peter Diamandis, Dr. Peter Diamandis who wrote abundance. He's actually writing a book. I don't know if you knew this correct with Tony Robbins called life force. Yep. I know it. Okay. So he does a podcast with a guy named Dan Sullivan and Dan Sullivan has a mastermind and he's a, he's a, he's a strategic coach. And he said something on the podcast that I was like, that is fucking fascinating because he's very wise. And I was like, Craig will love this quote. And he says, your eyes can only see and your ears can only hear what your brain is looking for. 
Yeah. <laughs> What's your brain knows? What your brain's looking for, right? It's that confirmational bias. And I don't, it, it just seems appropriate to say that not in any one of the one through fours that we just talked about, but it, 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 it applies in, in certain things. And I was like, you know, that sounds like a Craig, that sounds like that's something I need to put in Craig's uh, repertoire so he can, he can bang it out. Craig, update everybody. Let's Love update that. on, um, cause I've been getting a lot of, a lot of email from people like when's the next summit and things like that. Um, yeah. So, um, um, and then maybe uh, update on like, maybe there's a, li- you know, the mastermind yeah, well, and how we have a list of thing people going. Cause we don't have yeah. much bandwidth, but talk about that. And then there's one more thing. Oh, then the digital course. Yeah. Um, the digital okay. course is being edited right now, which is really cool. So uh, for, for, I guess the big things on the horizon are our one year mastermind is going to be coming to a close in March. So um, Pete, I wanted to make sure you're cool with this. Uh, you know, we got 16 people there. I don't know if we want to take many more than that. Cause I want to just really spend a lot of time with each no, one. I don't want to. Yeah. So, no. so we'll limit it to 16 again. Um, mm-hmm. there's people that were from waitlist from last time, but I also want to reoffer those mastermind attendees that we have a chance to sign up for another year. Cause I think, well, you know, of course, this- first writer refusal. Right. So, but that leaves potentially, you know, um, some people that may have gotten all they need from it. So if there's a couple spots, um, comment or email us and tell us you want a spot. I have two or three people that have asked for spots. I told them wait. So, um, we'll, we'll be announcing that. Hopefully let's do it for like January. Let's have everybody have the a number of spots that we can have by January. So it's a one year course. We dive deep. Um, it's, uh, well, I think, I think it's, it's, we dive deep and, and actually we're getting a little bit more, um, more with a curriculum, right. With a pathway, we call it the bulletproof pathway. And so we're going to dive deep in things like visioneering and build how to build practices and marketing and how to enroll dentistry and how to retain dentistry and how to recapture dentistry, how to get referrals, how to measure your dentistry, how the financial aspects, do you clinical do you aspects, a, we've do done you have a partner, answer. do you not, do you get a multiplication? Do you buy real estate? Do you do DSO? Do you have, and this is Craig's special one. Do you have fulfillment at the end of what you're doing because if you don't everything else i just mentioned is moot yeah it's true right so the mastermind is really cool so it, there there probably will be a wait list and since we're not launching it um we'll probably launch it again in in march um but uh i just oh, think yeah. it's really cool it's it's made yes. massive impact i was looking at some of the notes that we have on on some of our you know it's yeah, just what, it's what they the expected after, that have been made yeah awesome. well, we all put down what what would you expect what would be successful after 12 months of this and everybody's met their goal i had so many comments like if it stopped today you know six mm-hmm. months into it it would be worth everything so it's awesome I'm, so I'm we are going to do a course speaking of courses but we're going to we're going to get away from this covid situation especially in light of like more numbers on the rise or whatever good lord but we figured that putting a line in the sand for this summer this coming summer is going to be a good place. And we're going to do it in Salt Lake because Craig had such a great experience out um, in that region this oh summer. Oh my God, I loved it. it was and I've been house. wanting to do that. I've been really wanting to spend some time out there just hiking and mountain biking and doing summer activities in the mountains. Yeah. So Salt Lake's an easy place. There's almost a direct flight everywhere. And and I think like that's the why Houston event was so wildly successful and we had you know we actually sold out and we couldn't allow any more people because houston's pretty central and, and it has a lot of uh, direct flights everywhere so so we're going to be we're going to be updating y'all on that but as of now hopefully we don't go into pandemic phase 19 um but we're going to be doing something in in the summer so keep your yeah we're thinking june salt lake city that's i think that's a be good amazing. placeholder but, yeah, I'm excited about that and, it'd be be awesome. that, and, and we're going to you know obviously our families are going to come and so we're going to kind of create create some, uh, you know, a retreat around it. I, I mean, meaning come for longer than days because we're going to be out there. Um, but the awesome. event will be like two or three days like it's always been. And then lastly, um, the, uh, I know I spoke about the course, but if you're, on the, if you're on the text list, you'll obviously get notification of that when the course gets launched. It's really good. I'm actually doing a lot of the editing myself right now as we've already done the pr- production. And it's, um, it's about eight hours of, of, of education slash, you know, Craig pontificating and um, just kidding, but it's, yeah, it's really it's good. good. And it's, it's for me to say that, you know, sometimes I think we're our hardest judge, but listen, oh, you are it, definitely hard. Maybe Pete, your, your expectations, like, I want to make sure this is amazing. I want to make well, sure this is amazing. You know, and so going through it a second time and saying, you know, and, and so that should be to market in the next couple of weeks, I would anticipate probably by the time this podcast comes out. And the book as well. The book is still, I mean, I, I always, you, you, Pete thinks it's so funny, but I periodically will like thumb through our book again or reread it. I'm like, Pete, this is good shit. You're like, I love how you love your own book. How I'm many like, F-bombs did you drop? A lot. 
It's all no, good. How many, you, you said you counted once. Or someone I don't remember. Counted. I don't oh, remember. Okay. Maybe, okay. maybe I dreamt that. Yeah, you dreamt um, it. it. But was... that's it, buddy. We are at, we are at uh, about 45 minutes for this podcast. Any other updates that you can think of? Um, oh, oh, I got some. Actually, sorry. So you know how we mentioned the on one podcast, like, hey, if you're if you're look if you're a doctor and you're looking for a job versus right um, yep. versus someone or if you're or you're hiring for a job and, and we've even tried to toy around with like playing matchmaker and get like a job board because there's so much you know we have proximity to so many people on both sides of that meaning people who are hiring and people who want to be hired and so I did get a couple um, I did get a couple that I said I would that I would announce on here um, basically there's a if, if you're by chance listening to this and you are um pediatric dentist and you want to go to Jonesboro, Georgia, I got a person for you. Um, there's another one, Craig. Uh, Jacksonville, right? Uh, is he in Jacksonville? I think so. It's looking for a dentist in Jacksonville. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I think we, I think it's going to be too hard to do this. Yeah. We'll be, you get like 20 emails. (laughs) Some kind of, uh, we need to set up some kind of a connection board or something on our, on our website because it's, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of want on both ends, and it's you know finding that that finding that connected piece. So maybe we'll get sophisticated there. So yeah, just um, add that to uh, to yeah, your that, list of things. To your that, list that'll of fall things to do. that'll fall on your lap because it's technology and software, and you'll be well, tasked with that. No, yeah, that's so, not a good, um, don't be careful what you say. Yeah, you, I know, I know, yourself. but look, I think that's really helpful. I think that's oh, helpful, it's massive. It would be massive. You know? And so anything that uh you know can build value back to that number three we talked about. Yeah, adding value. <laughs> Um, that's it, buddy. That's all I got. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm feeling good on a Friday and uh, I'm glad to be doing this with you, pal. Likewise, buddy. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. And if you like it, leave a review. Oh yeah. Y'all have been doing awesome with that, by the way. Thank you. We're kicking everyone's ass in reviews. So please, please keep on doing that. It's actually, it's actually fun to see. So please. Keep yeah. You got to understand from Pete and Pete and my perspective, we're just kind of sitting there like, is anybody, is this good? And like to get that as like oxygen. Can you because, hear me now? Can yeah. you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> it's our oxygen. And you guys crushed, you guys came up and crushed that, that one comment that hurt my feelings. Um, that one Love review it. that hurt my heart. It's so anyway, good. everybody have a great and blessed Friday and we will see you next time.